Good morning. Good morning. We begin our worship today with a collect of welcoming. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, sent to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children in the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. There's a printing error in the pamphlet today. We apologize for that. I'll be reading the proper reading. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark, the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn, and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. The word of the Lord. Today's Psalm is Psalm 79, verses 1 through 9. We'll read responsively by half verse. 
O oh God, the heathen have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the air. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem. We have become a reproach to our neighbors. How long will you be angry, O oh Lord? <clears throat> Pour out your wrath upon the heathen who have not known you. For they have devoured Jacob. Remember not our past sins. Let your compassion be swift to meet us. Help us, O oh God, our Savior. For the glory of your name. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. And the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of oil. He said to him, take your bill, sir. Sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly, for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If any you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Believe it or not, this is the uh, first stewardship season sermon that I'll be preaching, and that's the gospel. You want to see where I go with this? A little challenging, isn't it? The, the dishonest manager is one of those stories 
that is a teaching of Jesus that very often leaves us reeling and in sort of a rejection mode. We kind of hear it and our armor goes on and up and we kind of let it wash over us because to spend time on it and to think about it, it creates this tension between us and Jesus because not only is Jesus being accusatory of the material world that we have to live and move in and very often have our being in, at the same time also there's this tension of what is wealth and a, and a polarity, a polarization happening between wealth and God. And as a result of that, and I, believe me, I've heard a lot of stewardship sermons preached on this particular gospel passage. You would be amazed at the, at the homiletical yoga that clergy go through trying to find a way through this. But instead of trying to bend the words around and just, I'm just going to take us directly into it and speak to the tension that we live in as people of faith vested in money. And we are vested in money. We are vested in the way we earn our living. We are vested in the transit that we make of buying things and selling things. There's always this mediation of wealth in our lives, particularly here in the West. For a time, as I understand it, though we didn't confront it, my wife and I, because we don't have much to barter. During the beginning of the pandemic, barter economy took a big plus. There was a lot of exchanging of an item for a service rather than an item for money for service. But nowadays, we're kind of back to that aspect where if there's money in your pocket, you can get things done. If you don't have money, you are deeply challenged. And very often, we find ourselves subject and even servant to waiting for the next check to arrive before we can do whatever we intend. And it is a tension we all live in. Jesus seems to be calling us out on that. And also creating a value system by which we are judged. The way Jesus taught in some ways and at some times was specifically designed to generate shock. To generate a strong reaction from the listener. Not always a positive reaction either. Sometimes it was intentionally scandalous, provocative in ways that no modern preacher or teacher really feels empowered to engage. This is one of those occasions. He is giving a very stark lesson of what it's like to live in the world where he and his disciples and his neighbors are walking. The manager who is charged with working for the owner of all of those resources is probably receiving our equivalent today of a minimum wage. And in order for that person to make money, if you will, to find a profit in their life, they literally had to charge a bit over the top of what the service exchange was. I told you this before when we talk about tax collectors. Tax collectors were drafted by the Roman Empire, charged with collecting the tax, but were not compensated except for what they could overcharge in the tax by those that they were responsible for collecting from you can understand why they would be despised because their lives, the, the way they were able to make their living was based on their ability to extract more than from the people that they were targeting, who were responsible for paying tax to the emperor. The manager does the same thing. He charges a little bit of a bit off the, it takes a little bit off the top and as a profit then is able to be successful. And I'm putting air quotes on that. For everybody out there who's just listening to this, you can see the air quotes in the air around you. To be successful, he has to take from others, to be extractive. When he is confronted with the fact that he has been dishonest, as Jesus says, when he has been mismanaging his master's property, when the charges are brought and he is summarily dismissed, he goes to all the folks and says, what do you owe my master? And the person quotes back to them the figure that he had originally agreed with them on. He says, listen, just pay back to my master what is owed. I'll eat the rest. And he is commended by the owner, by the master, for being shrewd. It's a profound challenge to us in the way we think about the world the way we seek to understand what is profit and loss. And ultimately what it does is it prevents us from assuming the mantles of success that are projected upon us by this world, 
by the lives that we have been living pretty much from the get-go. I remember my sister and I, when we were kids, getting our first allowances. And I was so excited because with an allowance, my dad and I, when he went down to the typist or when he had to run an errand into town, we always had to walk by the bus station, which was where all the candy and the comic books were. And I could spend the money that I got on my allowance for doing my chores on candy, on candy and comic books. I, that's the way I thought of it. Pray for my wife, because I still think candy and comic books, but it's just more expensive now with other things. My sister was excited because she could accumulate. So she was the only five-year-old that I knew of with a roll of bills in her dresser drawer. And she would take it out and count it and then put it back. And I said, don't you want to go get some comics and comic book or candy and comic books with us? And she says, no, I'm saving it up. Both of us were successful in terms of receiving money for our offering of our services to our parents, fulfilling that first set of economic transactions with which we were engaged as young people. Both of us chose very different ways to express that and understand it. Both of us experienced an abundance in life, I in candy and comic books, she in the raw ability to make her choices and choose how she spent her money, because mine was already spent. But both of us were figuring out what to do with more than enough. You see, we had more than enough as children because we didn't have to worry about feeding our families as little ones working in some other developing country. We didn't have to worry about taking the money that we got access to so we could buy rice and food and shoes for ourselves or for our family members. We didn't have to contribute to the household. The household was contributing to us. We had plenty of shelter, we had plenty of food, we had clothing, we had more than enough. And we were given discretion on what to do with the surplus. How we choose to live with that aspect of more than enough defines us as people of God. And it would be so easy to think of that as just money, wouldn't it? Right? But the funny thing is, when you get letters from the stewardship committee and I over the next couple of weeks, the rector doesn't speak to money, doesn't speak to wealth. That's a conversation that the stewardship chair will have you with you in the last letter. My letter is to you about wisdom. More than enough is not just about money. It's about intention and time and care and most of all, mindfulness. How do we take those things with which we have been invested, our privilege, our resources, the ability we have even to care about an issue or a person? How do we take those things and recognize that from God's own hand, we have received more than enough to accomplish the aims and the objectives that Jesus Christ lays out for us in the kingdom of God? And the kingdom of God is not far off. Instead, my brothers and sisters, it is near. It is found in the way we choose by word and deed to proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It is found in the way we greet and love and care for our neighbors as ourselves. It is found in the way we strive for justice and peace while we respect the dignity of every human being. We have more than enough but we have to figure out how we take that pool of resources and turn it from just a few fish and a couple of loaves of bread as the little boys lunch did for the feeding of the 5,000 into something dramatically more profound and impacting so that what returns to us is not just a few crumbs, a few morsels of food, but instead 12 baskets full as the miracle story goes. And you'll hear more about this miracle story as the weeks go by. When we are willing to give up our expectations of that kind of overwhelming return in privilege and in care and in time, and instead choose to invest that in the other, to welcome home all those who are seeking a kingdom of God as we experience and find it here, then we are living into the lessons that Jesus is provoking from us and in us. We are no longer being challenged as dishonored stewards of the 
resources and gifts that we have been given that we have squandered or worse that we have extracted more than our portion of instead we have become people who have opened our hands and our hearts and our souls with largesse we understand that we have more than enough privilege and resource and grace and attention and time to give and with that wisdom in hand we are able to find as the prophet jeremiah says that balm in Gilead. We are able to find the comfort for those who suffer. We find the food to feed the hungry. We find the clothing to protect the naked and exposed. We find the ability to console those who are brokenhearted, to lift up those who are oppressed, to welcome home those who are estranged, to heal the rifts that exist in this community and in the wider world. We have more than enough if we are willing to take upon and study the wisdom needed to open ourselves to what God is asking of us. A portion, a morsel, a bit to return to the world from all that we have been given. May we be willing to do so not only in this autumn campaign, but also in all of the years that we are given in this life and those that we have been invested with to guide in the years to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I invite you now to join and to stand and join in with me in the recitation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone. Let us pray saying, we bless your name, O Lord, from this time forth forevermore. We make our prayers for all church leaders. May they all those called be heralds to apostles serve you, the church and the world in all godliness and dignity. Please add your thanksgivings. We bless your name, O Lord. We make our prayers for kings and all who are in high positions. May they make laws that protect the poor and promote justice, set their hearts on truth. We bless your name, O Lord. O God, you created the heavens and the earth. Give us the courage and diligence to care for your creation. Grant us to live at peace and harmony with all the works of your hands. We bless your name, O Lord. God, we have had more than enough of violence and bloodshed. So let your compassion be swift to meet us. Help us 
O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. We bless your name, O Lord. We pray for the poor and needy. We thank you that you remember even those we too often ignore and disregard. Give us grace to proclaim to every person the good news of your love and faithfulness. You may add your petitions at this time. We bless your name, O Lord. We make our prayers for all who have died. We thank you that you sent Christ Jesus to humankind, that through him, everyone might come to the knowledge of your eternal salvation. We bless your name, O Lord. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Ann, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Betty, Guy, Pete, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Eddie, George, Tom, AJ, Brandon, Gail, Lisa, Teddy, George, Carol, the O'Donnell family, Marge, Peter, Rosemary, George, Ethel, and James. We remember as well in the Anglican cycle of prayer, Igre Episcopal Anglicana do Brazil. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the audit committee. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Tom, Carlos, Marianne, Paul, and Amy. We remember those marking anniversaries this week, especially Harriet and Lou and Patricia and Scott. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Austin, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace, brother. God's peace. Good morning. I'm really excited to announce this uh, event. Uh, Community of Hope Ministries has uh, secured a bus for a Stuff the Bus event at ShopRite this coming Saturday. So during the course of the day, we will have a bus on site at ShopRite here in Spotswood. And you, anything you buy in, Shop, in ShopRite, you 
walk it out to the bus, stuff it. We're gonna to try to fill that bus with resources for Alice's Cup Food Pantry, as well as the Mini Mart. This is our first major effort at a big in gathering. So I hope you all will participate. Stop by ShopRite, uh, say hello to folks. We're gonna have some scouts volunteering, some youth volunteering. We're very excited. Community Health Ministries has put some effort into this, so please do support them. In fact, I know a great way to support them and St. Peter's at the same time. Luann, do you happen to have ShopRite cards available? What an amazing coincidence. It's like we planned it that way. So you can buy ShopRite cards here at St. Peter's this morning. That will help St. Peter's. And then you can use those ShopRite cards to buy goods at ShopRite supporting our local business and thereby support our local food pantry. It's a triple win. So let's all take part in that journey and we'll uh, demonstrate that we have more than enough in terms of time, care, talent, and intention for the people of Spotswood and surrounding communities. So please do avail yourself of that. I'm also very happy to see that we are filling the tower room with goods for Alice's Cup Food Pantry and the Mini Mart. Deeply appreciate that. I also want to commend the uh, US government and as well our local restaurants because we have received another grant cycle, which is allowing for the restaurants to provide dinners, which lifts an immense burden off of our Wednesday crew as they gather to both try to find food and coordinate creating a meal. Now we just received the delivery and we are welcoming those in need. So it's a great way to celebrate that. We have that through the end of the month, don't we? Uh, um, Jeannie, we have that through the end of the month. This is our last week. Okay, well then I'd like to make a special call for support to help to help uh, Jeannie cook meals coming next week. And oh, okay. We'll take it. That's right. <laughs> All right, for those of you who can't hear that, they're cutting the grant by half. They're gonna give us 65 meals instead of 140. However, we're still gonna step up and, and help out and we'll be providing food. On October 2nd, we have St. Francis Day. So that is the day when we will be blessing the animals here in the church. So I see several folks with animals that could use a good blessing. Um, we look forward to seeing them and greeting them in church on the Sunday at both the eight and the 10 service. We also do an in-gathering of pet food if you wanna bring small bags or cans of pet food in. Um, again, you can use the ShopRite card to do that. That's a great way to do that. But we'll be taking those to the Old Bridge Animal Shelter to make sure that um, animals that need a little bit of love and care and support receive that. Finally, just a big shout out to everybody who's stepping up and joining in and supporting with the Worship Assistance Additions. We have two new rookie ushers that are breaking it in today. Well done, Donna and Doreen. Ron stepped up last week and did the uh, chalice for the first time. And, uh, you know, just it's great to see everybody helping out and lending a hand. We appreciate that. It's a great way to welcome everybody back and a way to celebrate again, more than enough in terms of support we have for folks at the altar. We can always use a few more hands to help with the dishes after the service. If you're interested in altar guild, speak to us. In fact, if you're interested, just make your way back to the sacristy after the service, you can see what the reset looks like. And finally, I just want to remind everyone that you don't have to be an Episcopalian or a member of St. Peter's to participate in communion. But when you receive the invitation to come forward with the gifts of God for the people of God, know that all are welcome please do join in on this side you'll see a chalice that is brought that is brass that is for dipping and intinction the chalice bearer will take the wafer from your hand dip it into the wine and place it on your tongue if you could extend that a little bit because if they do make contact with your uh with your lips your teeth or your tongue they will then set the chalice down and sanitize and then come back in the same way we have another chalice here but it's slightly different silver is for sipping the use of the precious metal with the silver plate, as well as the alcohol, the wiping of the purificator, all of this sanitizes the chalice so it is safe to sip from. Know that that is okay as well. So please do join us for a communion of one kind or in both, and know that all are welcome here before the kingdom of God, and we are glad you are here. All right, I think that's it for me in terms of announcements. Please do join us for fellowship after the service in the parish hall. If you wish, grab a cup of coffee. And of course, we have Sunday school in between the services right after this. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The congregation is invited to make all responses in the Eucharistic prayer indicated in italics. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son born of a woman to fulfill your law and to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with, their, with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yasi, Padre. Lo que, los que hemos sido redimidos por él y hechos un pueblo nuevo por medio del agua y del espíritu. Traemos ahora ante ti estos dones, santificados por tu espíritu santo para que sean el cuerpo y la sangre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. En la noche que fue traicionado tomó pan, dijo la bendición, partió el pan y se lo dijo a sus amigos y dijo, tomen y coman. Este es mi cuerpo entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto como memoria al mío. Después de la cena, tomo el caliz, dio gracias y dijo, beban todos de él. Este es mi sangre del nuevo pacto, sangre derramada por ustedes y por muchos por el perdón de los pecados. Siempre que lo beban, háganlo como memoria al mío. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we remember his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now in the language of our heart, as our savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. La sabiduría de Dios, el amor de Dios, y la gracia de Dios fortalecerte para ser las manos y el corazón de Cristo en este mundo. En nombre de la Santísima Trinidad. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.
Where I feel like they should. Yeah, right? We just need the top. So, this will be the box that we want to connect over. 